They are really a close couple, aren't they? Well, we're like that too, though. Then my husband casually embraced my shoulder. It made me extremely uncomfortable. Don't touch me. Having learned everything, I can no longer forgive this man. Yeah, but those two are about to experience hell because of you, huh? I said that and brushed off my husband's head. Sorry to keep you waiting. Here is a surprise gift for today's birthday boy. Saying that, I opened the door to hell. My name is Aubrey, a 32-year-old office worker. I've been married for four years to my husband Tim, and we have a three-year-old son. We're a family of three. Ever since we moved to my husband's hometown three years ago, my life took a turn for the worse. My husband is the eldest son, and had always said that someday we would return to his hometown. Even though I didn't expect it happened this soon, I was prepared for that future to come because I loved my husband. But the catalyst was the death of my father-in-law, who had a heart condition. My husband quit his job without consulting me, saying it was because he was worried about his mother. I understand that you're worried about your mom, but quitting your job and coming here—how do you plan on making a living? I was also working, but living expenses were difficult with just my salary. Then my husband Tim said, "The salary will be lower than now, but since we'll be living together, we won't need living expenses. It'll be fine. My friends from hometown are all good guys, and Aubrey, you will get used to it quickly too. I've always been a cautious person." And I admired my husband's optimistic nature before we got married. However, after getting married, there were times when I got frustrated with my husband's impulsive actions. Fortunately, there was a branch of my workplace within commuting distance from my in-laws' house, so I requested a transfer. We managed to finish the move in a hectic manner. And as for my mother-in-law. She was an incredibly kind person. We had agreed to divide the household chores, but to be honest, my mother-in-law took on most of the responsibilities. I'm sorry all the time. You're a lifesaver. <laughs> It's fine, really. Aubrey, you work full time, and I have spare time with my part-time job. Managing work and raising a child is truly amazing. Thank you for your hard work, but you don't push yourself too hard when things get tough, okay? How many times have I wished to hear those words of encouragement from my husband? Since returning to his hometown, my husband has been away from home more often. He often made silly excuses about being busy with his friends, and he would get scolded by his mother as well. About I had concerns about being in an unfamiliar place. I adopted well to my new workplace and relationship. However, there was something that I just couldn't understand. Huh? Again? As I said, my husband responded optimistically as usual. Oh come on! Don't say that. It's also a chance for you to make friends, right? My husband's friends from his hometown. Were close knit, and they had birthday parties every month, rotating among themselves. Even if I attended, being an outsider, I felt out of place. While I was left out, my husband would enthusiastically engage in nostalgic conversation with his friends. Among them, there was a couple that my husband got along with, but I didn't like them, or rather. I particularly disliked the wife. Her name was Naomi, and she was my husband's childhood friend. Naomi's husband Harry was also my husband's childhood friend, and the same age as him. Aubrey, let's be friends, okay? It's surprising for Tim's wife, you know. You're so elegant. As she said that, Naomi poked my husband. Laughing and playfully teasing him, 
I always thought she was too familiar in front of her husband's wife. This couple had a daughter the same age as our son. Unlike the cheerful mother Naomi, their daughter was a quiet child. But since they attended the same nursery school, she quickly became friends with our son. This led to Naomi frequently bringing her daughter to visit my in law's house to play together. Aubrey, where did you meet Tim? What do you like about Tim? Naomi often asked questions that made me feel like I had to explain myself. Noticing that I didn't look pleased, she seemed to realize. Oh, sorry. If I made you uncomfortable, words can be difficult. I'm really sorry. She would apologize in such a manner as well. During that time, when I came home from work, I saw a man and a woman having a headed argument at the entrance of the house. Shut up! Let go of me! The one raising his voice was my husband, Tim. Wait a minute! We're not finished talking yet! Naomi was the one in tears. I was deeply shaken, but managed to speak calmly. What are you two doing here? In response to my words, my husband wore a guilty expression and said, It's nothing. He forcefully entered the house, leaving me alone with Naomi. An awkward atmosphere filled the air. I asked Naomi, Did my husband do something? No, no, it's nothing. It's unrelated to you. Saying that, Naomi hurriedly left. As I rushed into the house, my husband was sitting there, laughing and watching TV, as if nothing had happened. That night, after my mother in law and our son had gone to sleep, I confronted my husband. I'll be direct. Are you cheating on me? I said it coldly. What? That's out of nowhere. I'm not cheating. I've always been faithful to you, Aubrey. He tried to embrace me, but I pushed his hand away. Enough with the excuses. You're cheating, aren't you? With Naomi. Upon hearing my words, my husband's eyes widened, and he started laughing hysterically, clutching his stomach. Ha! <laughs> me and Naomi? That's absolutely ridiculous. Are you still bothered by what happened today? It was just a casual conversation, and Naomi exaggerated her reaction. Naomi is like a little sister to me, and there are no romantic feelings involved. It's impossible. My face turned red with frustration as my husband continued to laugh. <laughs> I'm telling you, Aubrey, I would never cheat. Please, believe me. For a brief moment, my husband managed to put on a serious expression. He's lying. My husband had a habit whenever he lied. I was burning with a desire to revenge against my husband. The next day, there was the usual birthday party. This time, it was Harry, Naomi's husband, who was the center of attention. Children were not present at this gathering, it was meant for adults only held during the daytime when they could have left their children at school or daycare. Ultimately, it was just a pointless gathering where they used to someone's birthday as an excuse to drink and make a fool of themselves. There were times when I ignored their absurd request to take a day off and attend such gatherings. It was just too ridiculous. Happy birthday, Harry! Naomi handed him a gift and they smiled at each other. Tim, watching them, couldn't help but comment. They really are a close couple, aren't they? Well, I like that too, though. As he said that, he familiarly puts his arm around my shoulder. I forcefully pushed his hand away. Yeah, but it's because of you that those two are about to experience hell from now on. Huh? Ignoring my husband's reaction, I headed towards Naomi and her husband. Sorry to keep you waiting. Here is a surprise gift for today's birthday boy, Harry. I shouted loudly, 
surprising everyone since I'm usually quiet. In an instant, everyone around me became curious and interested in my behavior. Harry, happy birthday! The surprise is inside. Please, go ahead and open it. Huh? Oh, okay. What could it be? Harry, whom I rarely spoken to, looked a little puzzled. Is this a projector? Harry looked blankly at the gift. It's a surprise for me and Aubrey to you. Naomi said that and connected her phone to the projector. Oh, could it be a celebratory video? By the way, when did you two become so close? My husband tried to say something, but I pretended not to hear him. A celebratory video? If it was something cute like that, he must have been nice. The expressions of the people in the room, who had been excitedly gazing at the wall, quickly turned grim. Their gazes immediately shifted to a particular person. Is this Harry? And he's with. That's definitely not Naomi, right? One of our friend's words made Naomi's husband pale completely. Huh? Wait, what? He seemed too overwhelmed and couldn't find his voice. The video that was being projected showed Harry entering a hotel with an unfamiliar woman. Hey, Harry, who is this? Naomi calmly questioned Harry, who remained silent. Then my husband Tim spoke up. Nah, nah. This is all edited, right? It's really well done, though. He started jogging around, following my husband's actions. Yeah, it must be edited after all. I almost fell for it. Ken, who is from the same company as my husband, said, "The people around were now completely confused by their reactions." Naomi ignored them and started playing the next video. Is this me? My husband, who had been joking around just moments ago, turned pale like Harry. It was a footage from a car's dashcam. Tim, with a frustrated look on his face, was talking to someone on a phone. I came all the way to the neighboring town to meet a woman. I met through an app, but she didn't show up. It's so damn irritating. Oh, Ken. You too. Well, cheers to both of us, I guess. Many people in the room seemed to grasp the situation. No one in the room believed it was edited. Disdainful glares pierced my husband and Harry. The two of them seemed uncomfortable that they would shrink and disappear at any moment. Oh, and there is also a version with your coworker Ken. Should we watch it? In an instant, a woman who seemed to be that person's wife shouted. The place was in chaos, resembling a hellish scene. Aubrey, that's not it. Naomi is a misunderstanding. The idiotic man tried to say something, but our answer was clear: divorce, please. Yeah, there's no other option. Let's go back a little in the story. The day after the argument between my husband and Naomi, I was at the nursery to pick up our son when Naomi, who had also come to pick up her child, approached me. She told me that she had something important to discuss, so we exchanged contact information. I'll be direct. Tim is cheating on you. I had noticed my husband's infidelity, but I had mistakenly thought it was with Naomi. So, I was surprised. This is what Naomi told me. It's my husband, Tim, and that Ken. These three of them. Naomi's voice trembled with anger. The content was so disgusting that it made my body shiver. From that day on, Naomi and I decided to gather evidence of their infidelity. We were able to gather evidence quickly. It turned out that they were pretending to be single within the app. 
I felt like throwing up when I saw them entering the hotel. But having Naomi by my side was truly reassuring. By the way, I was the one who had disguised myself as the woman who didn't show up. We confronted the three idiotic men, who were now bowing their heads in shame. It's truly disgusting. I never want to see your face again. My strong words made my husband look a bit annoyed. Th- this doesn't count as cheating. It's just playing around. Don't be so angry, Aubrey. Come on, cheer up. As my husband tried to put his arm around my shoulder, I forcefully pushed him away. Do you realize how you only touch me like this when it's inconvenient for you? Disgusting! Don't touch me! My husband became enraged because he didn't like my attitude. Fine. Then why don't you just go back to your parents' place? Our son will be raised here by me and my mom. My body trembled at my selfish husband's words. The birthday celebration came to an end, but our friends cut ties with the husbands. By the way, even when we returned home, there was no apology from my husband. He seemed to assume that I had forgiven him. After a couple of days, my husband called me repeatedly on my phone. Hey, what's up? I responded cheerfully. Aubrey, where are you right now? I can't get inside the house. Tim's voice was filled with panic. What's happening? That house is no longer your family home, you know. Huh? What are you talking about? As Tim tried to play dumb, I decided to hand the phone to someone else. Tim? Mom? I sold that house, you know. You said you were worried about me and came back to the hometown, but you weren't even home. You've caused trouble for Aubrey too. Your belongings are packed in boxes outside. Collect them yourself. Tim seemed to finally grasp the situation after her words. Aubrey, I'm sorry. Please come back. Ken and I weren't told not to come to work anymore. Starting tomorrow. I'm unemployed now. Tim sobbed uncontrollably on the phone. Regarding the divorce, I planned to consult with a lawyer, and I made it clear about alimony and child support. Ignoring my husband wailing, I hung up the phone. In fact, I had already discussed this with my mother-in-law earlier. She took care of everything while I was telling my husband, "Let's sell this house too." I can't stand that shameless son anymore. We're cutting ties with him. And my mother-in-law quickly made a real estate deal. I was surprised by her efficiency. Everything had been planned, but the only ones unaware were the individuals themselves. They needed to learn a lesson about respecting women. Afterward, I started living with my son and my mother-in-law. In fact, my own parents had already passed away, and I only had my sister and our husband at my parents' house. Both Naomi's and Ken's also went through messy divorces, but they were successfully finalized. I heard that the three men started blaming each other and ended up fighting, leading to a police intervention. I couldn't find words to express my disappointment. From my perspective. They were all scumbags. Since then, Naomi and I have maintained a good relationship. Well, Tim has always been a scumbag, so I was worried when he brought a seemingly serious girl like you. I've been concerned all along. We laughed together. I don't need dad, as long as I have mom and grandma. And my son said with a smile, which brought tears to my eyes. Moving to an unfamiliar place, I experienced the hell, but it wasn't all bad. My mother-in-law remained kind, and I found myself relying on her. With this new and precious family, 
I am determined to move forward into the future.